Welcome back. Darren Jaime here with you. You are on Open, a live interactive talk show. So join in on our conversation by calling 718-960-7241. Or you can just send us an email to open at bronxnet.org. And like you said, we, of course, will open it up right here on the show. On September 11th, Building Futures Together, an organization dedicated to ending poverty one community at a time, will be hosting their 11th annual Walk Against Poverty. For this particular walk, they hope to raise funds for the island of Samar, the third largest island in the Philippines. This priority of the walk is to raise money to build a library in the over 2,000 barrios located in the provinces of Samar. With me now to provide more information is Ludette Alvelino, the founder of Building Futures Together, and welcome back, Ludette. Well, thank you for the opportunity again. Good, good. We, I, I know, like, we had you about a year ago, same time last year, just about, and you're back again this year, and your efforts are more intense. Well, yes, it, it's, it's more difficult. I mean, we do it every year. That's our only fundraiser is the walk. And it's, it's more intense this year is because of the economic situation mm -hmm. in the country. So it's more difficult to get people to donate. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where we're for, trying to focus on mm -hmm. that one. For people who aren't familiar about the island and what's going on over there, why don't you share a little bit? Okay, Samar Island is divided into three provinces. It's the third largest island in the Philippines, uh, but it's also one of the poorest. And it's the poorest because basically it, the population is highly illiterate. And people have to relate illiteracy with poverty. Because if you're illiterate, then you, you, you lose your power, your control over your life, and you're re reliant on the powers that be, you know, who may politically want to maintain their power. So I know some don't want the illiteracy issue to be removed or erased. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm concentrating on. Is What I'm concentrating on is not just the issue of illiteracy, but a combination of illiteracy, livelihood, because they cannot provide their basic needs and medical issues because they're principally malnourished and they die of very simple things like diarrhea. So it, it's sad. So those are three elements of poverty that are intertwined. Illiteracy, lack of livelihood, and uh, medical issues. And now through this walk, which is taking place on September the 11th, uh, what are you hoping to accomplish? We're hoping to raise awareness. I, I know uh, it's very difficult for people to relate to poverty, and, um, and um, especially poverty that's out of the United States. I'm sure there, of course, there are poor people here, but the difference is in the United States, there's a network of, um, how do you call that? Resources. Uh, resources that would, that would help or assist people who are in need. You know, there's the food stamps and all of that. But in the Philippines, that absolutely does not exist. So um, that, that's what we're trying to say, that despite the economic downturn here, if they can share a little of what they have to those who have absolutely nothing. Mm. So the race, I mean the walk, I should say, is taking place September the 11th. Let's give people a little bit more information so if they can't yes, time on the yes, schedule. Yes. If, if they, I would like them to join the walk. Um, it's taking place at Flushing Meadows Corona Park. Uh, we have a registration fee for, we call them foot soldiers, by the way, instead of walkers. Uh, to, because I want them to be at the for, forefront of the war against poverty, so we call them foot soldiers. So uh, there's a registration fee of $20 for those who walk, and of course the walkers are responsible for raising the funds, getting sponsors to, to support the, uh, the programs in the Philippines. Uh, registration starts at 9 and the walk starts at 10. Mm. How, what has it been like in previous years? Uh, we. We have not really broken through. I mean, it's not a huge throng. In right. fact, it's a very small crowd. But we need to constantly, I know at the beginning, it's, it's difficult to get your points across. Uh, but we do, we may not have a lot of walkers, but do we, we get donors who don't walk but, but donate. So that's another thing I can say, that if they cannot walk for any reason, they can make a donation. They can go to our website, www.buildingfuturestogether.org. There's a pay PayPal button there. They can click on that, or they can send, mail a check to Building Futures Together. The mm -hmm. address is on the, on the website as well. How have you been able to impact thus far through the walk and what you've been able to do? How have you been well, able to Well, actually, I, it, we have done quite a bit. For the little amount of money that we raise, mm -hmm. um, we were able to get uh, a community in a small barrio in Samar we sent this mother's 
to sewing school, they requested that. And when we, when we sent them to school, we, we set up a sewing center. We set up a, uh, how do you call this? Uh, industrial sewing machines there. So now they're there. There are mothers that are there regularly and, and earn. So one mother told me last May, I was in the Philippines then, that her life has changed, that now she's able to send all six children to school, not asking, because before only one child could go to school. Mm. So now she's sending all six children to school. She was able to repair their hut or their home. And you know, she was, she's, she's very pleased. And then we were, were able to set up 62 libraries because it's highly illiterate. So schools don't have books. And I think it's amazing for people. Well, we know the challenges that we have in the educational system here uh, in the United States, specifically here in New York City, overcrowded schools. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you talk about the Philippines, kids don't even have the ability to have books in school, yes. much less be able to take them home. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that was an issue I took up with the... Uh, the Department of Education super, superintendent in that area. For, for the few year, first few years, I kept on insisting that she, I said, have the children read books. I kept on saying that. She kept on saying yes. So one time, she, I guess she got annoyed or something. So she goes, but what are they going to read? Then I realized they have no books. So now we have books there. And we, we began this, what we call a program called Bella's Bunch. And these are small children in the United States, my grandniece and nephews, that um, every birthday party, they ask their friends to bring used books and toys, and we then ship that to daycare centers. Wow. Well, every little bit counts, right? Yes, of course, yes. All right, so tell the public once again how they can take part and where the event's going to be. Yes, please join the walk. Uh, it's going to be held at Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, September 11. Uh, registration starts at 9, walk starts at 10. We assemble under the Unisphere. There are directions to the park and to that area in our website, which is www.buildingfuturestogether.org. Or you can send a donation by going to uh, the PayPal button on our website or sending us a check. All righty. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing and we'll with see us. You, we'll see you at the walk. We'll try to see you at the walk. Yes, thank you so much. And good to thank see you, you again. Thank you. All right, Ludena Avalino, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. And we want you to stay.